Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Alright, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, everybody's friend Pete, showing you how to do it the right way. Over here at DYI Automotive School, specifically designed for you, the viewer, to learn how to do it yourself. That's what DIY stands for, and that's what my faithful employee behind me is doing. He is doing it himself, see? Today, we have a very special lesson. It's a very quick lesson, and what we're going to do is we are going to teach you, the viewer, the proper way to mix Bondo up. But you know what? We're going to learn it my friend Pete's way, because the way that my friend Pete does it is even better than everybody else. And I'm going to show you why. This is a very, very top secret lesson. We don't want it to get out. We don't want no one else to know about this, but our favorite, most wonderful viewer, you, right here at DIY Auto School. Here we go. The first thing you want to do is get yourself some nice quality Bondo. Uh, I'm going to say this and I'm probably going to repeat it. You don't need the most expensive Bondo. This brand that I have right here costs $9 a gallon. Okay? This Bondo here is as good as the $50 gallon stuff. Don't let anybody tell you different. They are lying to you, sir. Okay. The rule of thumb is if you mix a golf ball size of Bondo, which is basically about this much right here, okay, that would be a golf ball size, you want to mix a pea size of hardener, which is supplied with your Bondo. Before we use our hardener, though, we want to take the tube and we want to go ahead and smush it up just like this, okay? That's very important because what you want to do, you want to mix all of the ingredients in there. You want to make sure that they're all mixed up properly. Then we're going to take our hardener and we're just going to put our hardener right there. That's basically what you're looking at right there. You want to take your Bondo and hold your spreader at an angle like such. Okay, because what that's going to do, that's going to cup your Bondo, okay, and make you, you see what I'm saying, it's going to make you mix it up. If you look closely at my Bondo palette, you're going to see streaks. That's what we need to get rid of. It needs to be one solid color, okay. All right, if you notice how I'm mixing it, okay, I'm swirling it in a figure eight, okay, and then I'm pushing it down. Swirling it in a figure eight, and then I'm pushing down, okay? Repeat that process. You pick it up, okay? Do you see what I'm saying? Just like kneading dough, all right? Until it's one solid color. Make sure there's no streaks on it. Clean your Bondo spreader off as you're going. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually kneading it. I'm pushing it all together, see? Do you see how I'm doing that? Okay? And then I'm going to come back again, and I'm going to get it in a nice, clean circle ready to use. Now that is how you mix normal, everyday Bondo. I don't care if it's the $10 gallon, okay, if you look right here, or if it's the $50 gallon. That's how you do it, okay? Since I'm going to use this uh, Bondo palette again, I'm going to go ahead and keep my surface clean, okay? Because I take my extra Bondo that I don't use, and I go ahead and spread it on there. And this will dry to a nice clean surface, and it's reusable, see? Okay, now you're getting to the final coat of Bondo, and you want to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, everything flows out good, and all your pinholes are filled up. And this is going to be your final sand job. This is going to be your final everything before primer, okay? Now what we're going to do is we are actually going to take some polyester filler. Is that polyester? Yes, polyester finishing putty. Now this is uh, made by several different brands. I don't want to mention them. But uh, all you got to remember is polyester putty. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some Bondo, just like we did before. We're going to repeat the process. Okay. Just like you see. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take our polyester putty. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Can you come over here, Rich? Please. This is so top secret. I don't even think Rich knows about it. Okay. okay can you go ahead and remove your masks, please? Employee. 
stand right here so everybody can thank you very much right there's good okay have you ever used bondo and evercoat together no you've never done that you've never even heard of that before the evercoat no that's no that's news to you mm -hmm. to take evercoat just like you see here and mix the bondo all together you've never done that mm -hmm. so maybe this is a lesson for you too am i right no it is good so if you can stand over to the side maybe you can learn something okay all right Okay. See, this is a school not just for me, but it's, it's also a school for my employees that are supposed to know everything. That's why I hired them. But. So once you get your Bondo on your Bondo pallet, just like you see right here, what you want to do is take your polyester putty, okay, and you want to go ahead and add some to it. Okay? And you want to practically put almost half, but not as much as half, okay, maybe a quarter. Do you see what I'm saying? It depends on how big of an area that you're working on is how much Evercoat that you're going to add to the Bondo. Now, if you look at this Bondo that I just mixed up, I want you to look at that real close there. And you can see that the texture of it is rough, okay? You can see the roughness of it. It looks kind of like concrete, okay? Can you see that, uh, Rich? Okay. All right, so that's the Bondo that we mixed up first. Now what we're going to do, what the finishing putty is going to do, this is going to be for our final coat of Bondo. I'm going to go ahead and add my hardener, okay? You can basically get an idea of the amounts of each one that you add. Use your own judgment prior to the uh, weather that you are working in, okay? Once again, I'd like to mention, the colder it is, the longer it's going to take to dry, so you might add just a little bit more hardener. Don't get over-hardenered, then it'll never dry, and when it does dry, it won't stick. So it's very important to always use the right amount of hardener. If you use too much hardener, it will dry, but it won't stick to the metal or the fiberglass surface or plastic or whatever you're working on. But then on the other hand, okay, look what happened here. I got a little piece of trash in there. You always want to get that out. But then on the other hand, if you don't use enough hardener, so it's like a, you know, a, a test and trial period. Feel when comfortable you with the way that you like to mix it up. I like to circle it in a motion and then knead it down. Circle, knead. You see how I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I want you to look at the texture of each two in a different way. And I want to show you the difference. Get all your streaks out. Make all. Make sure all your streaks are out of the bondo, just like you see right here. Okay. And of course, this is for showing purposes only. So I'm going to go ahead and use it on this surface. Okay. I'm going to take the mix that I just mixed up, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on my bondo palette. And I want you to see the difference just from adding Evercoat. And then I'm going to tell you a little story, okay? Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.